All right, in the interest of time, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Again, thanks to all of you for taking time out of your day to join us. Just a few housekeeping notes before we begin. This workshop is being recorded uh, and informational material will be made available to all participants and registrants following today's session. You should get a copy uh, of this recording about 24 hours from now via email. All right, so if you have to skip out or uh, cut out early, no worries. Uh, you will be able to access a recording of this presentation. Uh, also, you know, we want this to feel as interactive as possible. If you've attended any of Savvy's workshops or webinars before, you know that we uh, value your questions dearly and we try to answer as many of them as we can. Uh, so I encourage you, if you do have questions throughout the presentation, uh, please do put those in the Q&A. Uh, I'm joined by some of my uh, amazing colleagues, uh, including Job, Raphael, and Ryan, who are going to be helping me answer some of these questions uh, in the Q&A uh, as I go through the presentation. And last but not least, if you need to enable closed captioning or live transcription during this webinar, uh, we're gonna put a link in the chat with instructions to enable this feature on Zoom. All right. Uh, well, for those of you who uh, might not know me, my name is Lindsay Clark. I am Chief Borrower Advocate here at Savvy, uh, and I've led most of our educational workshops and webinars uh, for the last five years or so, uh, and I'm a borrower myself. Uh, I have a little over $200,000 in student loan debt, so as I always say, I hope that makes some of you feel better about your own situations uh, right from the bat. So just a quick look at the agenda we're going to cover here today. Uh, I'm first just going to briefly introduce who we are here at Savvy for those who might be new uh, to our webinars, uh, give you a chance uh, to get to know us a little bit more uh, and why we are such a trusted source for so many borrowers across the country. Uh, and then we are going to dive right into the meat of the presentation, which today uh, is about the resumption of payments. Uh, there have been some updates around dates. Uh, and we wanna make sure that all Savvy borrowers uh, and users are aware of the latest information. Uh, I'm then gonna cover some of the other major policy and program updates, uh, including President Biden's one-time debt relief plan, uh, the new income-driven repayment plan, uh, and a few others. So we'll make sure to give you sort of the complete and full update uh, on the latest uh, program and policy changes out there. And then we're going to wrap up the presentation with an overview of your Savvy account, uh, what you can do right now to make sure you are prepared for the resumption of payments uh, and all that is to come in the coming months. All right, so for those that might not be familiar, uh, Savvy is a social impact technology startup based in Washington, D.C., uh, and we were founded by student loan policy experts and advocates who have been fighting on behalf of the borrower for almost a decade. Uh, and in 2017, this was the first year that borrowers could start applying for public service loan forgiveness. Uh, and as many of you might know, uh, over 100,000 borrowers applied and less than 1% were accepted. Uh, and uh, our founders saw this and decided to do something about it. So they developed Savvy as a technology platform and a service to help borrowers like you and like me not only better understand our student loan debt, but navigate successfully from start to finish around some of these notoriously difficult, overwhelming and cumbersome programs like public service loan forgiveness uh, to ultimately cross the finish line and achieve forgiveness. Uh, but along the way, our goal is to make the experience of being a student loan borrower better. Uh, and we do that by trying to unlock as much additional savings as possible. We're a public benefit corporation, which means it exists in our mission and charter to serve the public benefit. And that's exactly why we do things like this here today. We host educational workshops and webinars almost on a daily basis for our various communities of borrowers across the country, uh, because we firmly believe that when borrowers are better educated and more informed about their debt, they are ultimately more empowered as consumers. So what does that mean uh, for you as a borrower? Well, it means that we simplify and digitize the process from start to finish. You're able to see uh, personalized results that help you understand your eligibility for these programs. And then we take it a step further and offer uh, you the chance uh, to offload that administrative burden, the application process, et cetera, around these programs. And we take that on for you uh, to ensure that you absolutely reach that finish line. 
Uh, average savvy users are able to reduce their monthly payment by about $150 a month uh, and receive on average about $20,000 in forgiveness. Uh, and so far, we've been able to help our users uh, find over $1 billion in projected loan forgiveness to date. Uh, so again, we're going to talk a little bit more later on in the presentation uh, about the savvy process uh, and make sure that everyone has their account updated uh, and is prepared uh, for the resumption of payments. Uh, but for now, we're going to dive right into why we are all here today, which is this. Federal student loan payments are going to resume this fall. Interest will resume starting on September 1st, 2023 and payments will be due starting in October of 2023. Each borrower has their own uh, due date, all right? So we're gonna talk about why it's important to make sure you know what your due date is uh, and where to check that. All right, so again, why is this payment pause ending? Well, the recent debt ceiling bill basically codified the end of the COVID-19 payment pause. So as a result, after nearly three plus years on pause, uh, the pause on payments and interest will officially end on August 30th of this year. Uh, now it was made clear and became official by the Department of Education and White House this past week that uh, the technicalities around that are as such. Interest will resume on September 1st and payments will be due starting in October. Again, interest will resume on September 1st and payments will be due starting in October. Now, student loan servicers are supposed to notify borrowers of their payment due date, okay? Uh, now, keep in mind the Department of Education is currently looking at ways to ease borrowers back into repayment, uh, potentially some type of grace period, uh, but either way, they will be notifying all borrowers well before payments restart, all right? Now, here at Savvy, uh, many of us uh, ourselves are borrowers, uh, but we realize the difficulties and the complications uh, that we expect borrowers to experience around this uh, return to repayment. Uh, this payment pause started back in March of 2020. So again, three plus years in which borrowers like yourselves, like me, have not had to make student loan payments. Uh, so obviously, the news that those payments are turning back on uh, is going to be uh, distressful. Uh, and what we want to make sure is that borrowers are aware of this as early as possible. Uh, and we're committed to helping every single borrower uh, prepare and ease back uh, into repayment uh, without any difficulties. But I just wanted to point out, you know, if you are feeling uh, that distress, you are not alone. According to a new analysis of student loan borrowers that, re that was released by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the CFPB, about 20% of student loan borrowers have risk factors that suggest they could struggle when payments resume. Also, uh, it was found that more student borrowers are now delinquent on other payment obligations than they were before the pandemic, and the median scheduled payments on those other obligations have increased by 24%. Uh, for borrowers expected to return to repayment. So again, the conditions under which uh, this return to repayment uh, is happening, I know are, are not ideal for many, many people. Also complicating the return to repayment, the fact that tens of millions of us, myself included, will have to work with a different uh, student loan servicing company than they did before the pandemic. Why is this the case? Well, over the last three years, three of the biggest federal servicers out there basically ended their federal contracts. And what that meant for the borrowers that were being serviced by those entities is that they would need to be transitioned or moved to other student loan servicers for management. All right, so as a result, more than 17 million borrower accounts uh, have been transferred to new servicers or different servicing platforms. Uh, and it's estimated that that number could reach more than 30 million in the coming months. Uh, and this all happened while payments were paused. So while many of us were not paying attention to our student loans, uh, to no fault of our own. Uh, so it makes it even more important, uh, what we're about to talk about on this page, uh, that borrowers are aware of their current servicer as it has most likely changed uh, from what it was before uh, the payment pause began. So how should borrowers prepare right now? 
first and foremost, it is vital that you confirm your contact information is up to date at studentaid.gov. We'll put this link in the chat. Uh, this is the uh, Department of Education's Federal Student Aid official website, all right? So it is the record of any federal debt uh, that you might've taken out. You want to make sure that your contact information is up to date there because that's the information that will ultimately be given to a servicer. Okay. So you want to make sure your contact information is up to date at studentaid.gov. Next, once you've logged into your studentaid.gov account, you want to confirm who your student loan servicer is. This should be visible to you on your dashboard when you log into your account. Uh, and it should tell you exactly uh, who your servicer is and even link to that site, okay? So that's where you can find out uh, your current student loan servicer. And again, it's really important, even if you don't think it's changed, I, I would encourage everyone to make sure uh, that uh, they are accurate and uh, that they know what that servicer is by checking on that account. Next, you wanna make sure your savvy account is updated. Uh, you know, I. I Sure, it's been a while since many of you have thought about your student loan debt uh, or even logged into your savvy account, uh, but you want to make sure that your general information, your income information, employment, and most importantly, your servicer account is synced. We might have record of your old servicer, uh, and so if your servicer has changed, if you are one of those 17 million or plus borrowers uh, that have been impacted and now have a new or different servicer, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you sync that new servicer with your savvy account. This way we can uh, accurately monitor your account going forward. Uh, and so this is really, really important. I can't emphasize enough uh, how much uh, we can assist you uh, just by making sure that your recent and updated servicer is synced with your savvy account. And then from there, you're gonna to wanna to check your current repayment plan and payment amount according to your servicer. Uh, and I encourage you to enroll in an income-driven repayment plan if you haven't uh, already enrolled in one. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the presentation. All right, before I go any further and talk about some of the other major policy and program updates, I just wanna take a quick peek uh, at the Q&A to see if there are any questions that I might be able to answer out loud uh, regarding the return to repayment. Uh, Joe, Brian, anyone on uh, our support team, is there anything that you're seeing uh, commonly asked that might be helpful to answer out loud? Hi, Lindsay. Um, I know we're going to talk about this in a moment, but it looks like a lot of people have questions about how uh, PSLF works with the payment pause. Yes, I am going to talk about that in about three minutes. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you can hold tight, uh, I will be answering that question uh, and hopefully providing all of you with more clarity. Um, and I would say it's good news uh, for any borrower that is eligible for public service loan forgiveness and has been working for a qualifying public service employer uh, during the payment pause. So stay tuned and I will get to that in just a few minutes. Great. And one other one I've seen a few people ask is when payments do resume, are people going to be responsible uh, for retroactive interest or retroactive payments? So yes, uh, if you had uh, interest that had not been paid off, basically, uh, you know, before the payment pause began, that will, uh, you will be responsible for that come uh, the resumption of payments and actually the resumption of, uh, of interest. Uh, so that is something to, to keep in mind. Um, you know, if you did have remaining interest on your account right now uh, and you wanted to make a payment towards that, uh, you would be able to. Uh, again, you know, with the, the pause on payments and interest, it's at 0%, right? So any payment that you make uh, could either go towards that interest or directly towards your principal balance. Uh, so that is definitely something uh, to keep in mind. All right. Well, thank you, Job. I will keep chugging along here uh, and keep the great questions coming. Okay, so let's dive into some of the other major policy and program updates. Starting with President Biden's Student Loan Debt Relief Plan, or One-Time Debt Relief. So as a refresher, uh, this program was announced last year 
uh, and it provided eligible borrowers with full or partial discharge of loans, up to $20,000 for those who had received a federal Pell Grant, and up to $10,000 for non-Pell Grant recipients. Applications for this program opened in October of last year. About 16 million or so borrowers applied. Uh, and then lawsuits started pouring in uh, around the legality of this program. Uh, and as of November 11th of last year, 2022, the Department of Education was forced to pause accepting applications. So if you have already applied for this program, uh, they will hold your application. There's no need to reapply. Uh, however, if you have not yet applied, uh, at this point in time, you are not able to do so. Uh, they, they, again, have paused accepting new applications pending uh, a upcoming decision from the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court began hearing oral arguments uh, on the legality of this debt relief plan back in February of this year. Uh, and they were uh, essentially trying to determine if the, plaint the plaintiffs have standing or reason to sue, uh, and if this debt relief program is in fact legal. So the Supreme Court justices uh, have been deliberating to determine the fate of the program. If they rule in favor of the plaintiffs, the program will not continue. Uh, but if the plaintiffs don't have standing or if they rule in favor of the Biden administration, the program will continue. And if the program continues, they will reopen the applications uh, for another year. So if you have not yet applied, you will be able to do so at that point in time. Again, if you have already applied, you will not need to reapply. Uh, and then they will begin issuing uh, that cancellation uh, immediately thereafter. We expect a decision from the Supreme Court uh, imminently. <laughs> it actually could be tomorrow. Thursdays are the Supreme Court uh, decision days, uh, Thursdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, but they could add additional days, uh, Friday or early next week. Uh, so again, we expect to hear this uh, in the coming week, I would say. And obviously, uh, for all savvy users, we will keep you posted uh, and notify you via email uh, of any important announcement that should come. All right, now on to public service loan forgiveness. And uh, this is uh, to Job's question uh, a little bit earlier about how does the payment pause affect public service loan forgiveness? So huge opportunity for anyone who has been working for a qualifying public service employer uh, at least since March of 2020. Basically, for each month that payments have been paused, so from March of 2020 through what will be you know, September of 2023, okay, anyone who's been working for a qualifying employer is essentially able to receive uh, free PSLF credits for that period of time. So for every month payments have been paused, which will be 40 plus months in total, uh, a borrower who has been working for a qualifying employer is able to receive 40 plus PSLF credits towards the 120 total that they need to achieve full forgiveness on the remainder of their loan balance. So that basically puts you a third of the way closer to full forgiveness without having to pay a dime. Now, this is a huge opportunity because normally under the program, borrowers need to have made a payment in order to achieve one of these qualifying payment credits, right? And under public service loan forgiveness, you need to achieve 120 total cumulative in order to achieve forgiveness on your loans. So this payment pause period provides borrowers with the opportunity to uh, progress even closer towards forgiveness, 40 plus credits, in fact, uh, without having to make a payment at all. Uh, now, I've found many borrowers that I've worked with and talked to are largely unaware of this, or maybe they were misinformed or confused uh, and actually even opted to make payments during this time voluntarily because they thought they needed to, uh, which is not the case. And in fact, if you did make a voluntary payment during this payment pause period, you are still eligible uh, to have that refunded to you uh, if you are just hearing this news for the first time and realizing that you actually were uh, receiving credits throughout the uh, payment pause period. All right, so again, 40 plus PSLF credits uh, since March of 2020 could be yours for borrowers who are eligible for public service loan forgiveness. How do you actually get those? 
Uh, well, there's only one way to do that, and that is by submitting the PSLF employment certification form. Some people call it the PSLF form, the PSLF application, whatever you want to call it. There is only one form for this program, and that is it. Uh, and so that is the only way by submitting that form to Mohila uh, that you can actualize those credits and receive those. All right, so that is very, very important. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you uh, have certified your employment at least going back to March of 2020. But in reality, you wanna be certifying uh, your entire employment history, uh, any current or previous employment you might've had that could qualify for PSLF. Keep in mind for this program, it is completely retroactive. Uh, PSLF began October of 2007. So any employment from October, 2007, to present day is fair game, right? So for someone who has never submitted a PSLF form before and has worked for four qualifying employers over the course of that uh, time, you're going to need to submit four PSLF employment certification forms, one for each of those employers, right? That is the only way to actually receive these credits. Uh, and those forms are going to Mohila. Mohila is the sole servicer in charge of the PSLF program. Also, good news on PSLF, uh, some of the lasting improvements are taking effect July of this year, so right around the corner. Many of you might remember the PSLF limited waiver, uh, and there was a deadline for that waiver, October 31st of last year. However, many of the benefits that were extended under that waiver, okay, as far as what counted uh, making it easier to uh, achieve and progress towards forgiveness. Those are actually becoming permanent, all right? So for many people who, uh, you know, might've thought they weren't eligible or were rejected from the program before, uh, I highly encourage you to apply now uh, because things have really changed uh, and the majority of borrowers uh, are going to be eligible going forward. Uh, so the, you know, sort of long-term or lasting improvements to the program are taking effect in July, and these are going to help borrowers earn progress towards PSLF. So you'll be able to receive credit for late installment or lump sum payments. You're also going to be able to receive credit for periods of forbearance or deferment. This is a huge one. I know so many borrowers uh, who weren't able to afford their monthly payments and so went on to a forbearance or deferment. Uh, and normally under the program, that wouldn't have counted. Now those are going to start counting. Uh, so again, this is all going to help you progress towards that 120 and achieve full forgiveness on the remainder of your loan balance. Uh, some of these improvements are also going to simplify criteria when it comes to certifying employment. So it's going to apply a standard full-time employment of 30 hours or more per week. Uh, and it's also going to allow adjunct faculty to multiply credit hours by 3.35 uh, in hopes that more of them will be able to now qualify. All right. So again, this is all really, really good news and big opportunities for anyone uh, who is pursuing public service loan forgiveness. All right, moving right along, uh, let's talk about Fresh Start. So this is a new program that was announced last year that is designed to quickly bring borrowers out of default and back into good standing. Normally, when you fall uh, delinquent and fall into default, uh, there are two ways to get out of default. One, there is a nine month rehabilitation process, okay? Or you are able to consolidate and bring that loan back into good standing right away. Now you're only able to consolidate once, so it's sort of your one get out of jail free uh, card. However, under this new Fresh Start program, all right, basically they are going to restore your access to income-driven repayment, forgiveness, even getting new aid. Uh, they're going to end any wage garnishment and collection calls, okay? Uh, all you have to do, uh, if you are currently in default and wish to bring your loan back into good standing, is to opt in via phone with your respective collection agency, in order to enroll in this program. Once you've opted in, the process takes about one month to complete and your loans are back in good standing and you are, again are able to enroll in an income-driven repayment plan, be eligible for forgiveness like public service loan forgiveness and even receive new uh, loans and new aid, all right? So again, this program requires you to opt in via phone. 
All right, so you're going to need to do that with the respective collection agency uh, that is currently holding your loans. Uh, and the process takes about one month to complete uh, once you have made that phone call and the opt-in. The Savvy Support Team is always here to help any borrowers who are in need of assistance with this. Uh, if you need someone or you'd like someone to be on the phone with you and help you make that call, or even determine where your loans are with what collection agency, this is what our team is here to help you to do. Okay, last but not least, I wanted to talk about the new income driven repayment plan. All right, so the Department of Education uh, announced last year uh, that they are going to be introducing a new type of income driven repayment plan. And essentially, it is a revision of the existing repay plan. Okay, now this new plan is going to do a few things. Okay. It's going to uh, limit your monthly payment based on 5% of your discretionary income for undergrad loans and 10% for graduate loans. This is uh, in contrast to the existing plan right now, that is 10% across the board for all uh, types of loans. All right. Another thing that it's going to do, and I'm particularly uh, excited about uh, on a personal level, uh, is that it is basically going to subsidize any unpaid interest in perpetuity going forward. So that way, regardless of how little you might be paying on your loan each month, and it could be as low as $0 a month on an income-driven repayment plan, plan, your balance will never increase as a result of interest. I can't tell you how many borrowers uh, I've talked to, myself included, uh, who will tell you that... Uh, They've been paying on their loans for years, if not decades, and their loan balance not only has stayed the same, it's actually increased, and that's a result of capitalized interest. So this will prevent that from happening going forward. It won't be retroactive, but it will prevent that from happening going forward. All right. This new plan will also raise the amount of income considered non-discretionary. So what that means is no borrower making under 225% of the poverty level will have a student loan payment. Or in other words, if your income is under $30,000 a year, you are eligible for a $0 monthly payment. And keep in mind, for anyone who is eligible for public service loan forgiveness, each one of those $0 monthly payments counts as a qualifying payment credit towards the 120 you need to achieve ultimate forgiveness. So again, it's going to help reduce the monthly payment across the board for the majority, if not all, student loan borrowers out there. Last but not least, borrowers with loan balances under $12,000 will be eligible to receive forgiveness after 10 years instead of the normal 20 years on an income-driven repayment plan. Okay, So again, they're trying to shorten the, the time horizon on forgiveness uh, for income-driven repayment. Now, this program or this plan, I should say, has been announced, uh, but it has not yet been implemented. So you are not able to enroll in this just yet. We are expecting to hear more updates from the Department of Education uh, in the coming weeks. And we hope that this will be implemented before payments resume so that borrowers will be able to enroll. And of course, Savvy has been working to make sure uh, that when this does become available to the public, uh, that you will be able to see your options under this new plan uh, through your Savvy account, and we will be able to enroll you in that program seamlessly. All right, so just a recap of some of these important upcoming dates, because I know that this is a lot of information for anyone to consume, especially in one sitting. So again, earlier this year in February, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments on President Biden's sweeping debt relief plan. Uh, in June or this month, uh, we expect a, a Supreme Court decision on the legality of that plan and whether or not it will be allowed to continue. Uh, we also expect uh, to hear about the new income-driven repayment plan. Uh, that could be June. It might uh, lead over into July, uh, so we will keep you posted. Starting in July of this year, so right around the corner, the long-term improvements to public service loan forgiveness are going to take effect. So these are, are going to make it easier for you to progress towards that 120, uh, and you'll be able to get credit for periods of forbearance and deferment and things like that 
uh, which in addition to the pandemic and payment pause period, right, uh, many borrowers are going to find themselves at or over the 120 before payments even resume. Uh, so if you are eligible for public service loan forgiveness and have yet to submit those forms, I highly encourage you to do so because you may find you don't even need to worry about returning to repayment because based on these improvements, uh, you've already satisfied that 120 or more. Then September 1 of this year, again, keep that in mind, September 1st of this year, interest resumes on federal student loans. And then starting in October of 2023, this year, payments will be due on your federal student loans. And again, everyone will have a different due date in October, and you're able to check that exact due date with your servicer. All right. Again, I know that that was a lot of information that we just covered. So we want to take a quick pulse check, see how everyone's feeling, what questions you might be having. Uh, I'm going to sort of open it up to our, our support team, who I know has been furiously trying to answer as many questions as possible. Uh, guys, is there anything that we're seeing uh, that might be helpful to answer out loud? Hey, Lindsay. I have seen a lot of people that have questions about enrolling in the new uh, income-driven plan if they are already on an income-driven plan and they wanna know how that works. Yeah, so we are hearing, and now this has not been released officially. Uh, so we, we I don't wanna sort of speak too soon here, uh, but in the um, initial uh, release uh, of sort of the regulations around this plan, uh, it was indicated that if you were previously enrolled in repay, you would be automatically enrolled in this new revised version of repay, okay? Uh, now, when it comes to other types of income-driven repayment plans, so there are pay, pay as you earn, income-based repayment, or IBR, and income-contingent repayment, or ICR, okay? <clears throat> when it comes to those other plans, if you were enrolled in any of those, uh, you would need to uh, likely submit a new application to enroll in this new plan. But I would say we will be uh, providing another update once this program is officially released. The regulations around this program were announced in January of this year, but they have been going through a review process and so could change. Uh, so uh, I want to hold off on, until sort of giving any finality or confirmation on some of these nuances or details. As soon as we hear and know more from the Department of Education, uh, we will communicate that to you and be ho hosting another webinar just on uh, this new repayment plan. Uh, so I would say stay tuned um, because some of those so those details could be in flux um, and may likely change. Uh, so we want to provide you with the most accurate information uh, and we'll plan to do so when that becomes available. I saw someone ask a great question. Um, they asked, can someone who has not paid on their loans yet because of the COVID pandemic pause enroll in an income-driven repayment plan uh, and have the past three years of COVID pause payments count towards the 10 years uh, of $12,000 in income-driven repayment forgiveness under this new plan? All right, and the answer is yes. <laughs> so this, this pandemic period from March of 2020 uh, through what will be September, October of this year uh, is going to benefit most borrowers, whether you have never made a payment at all or whether you've been paying for years. All right, so it is going to help bring you closer uh, to whatever forgiveness you might be achieving, whether that be under income driven uh, repayment forgiveness or public service loan forgiveness. All right, team, any other questions uh, that might be helpful to answer out loud? I saw someone ask, is this new repay plan eligible under PSLF? Yes, it is. It is basically a revision of the existing repay income-driven repayment plan, okay? Uh, and yes, it is absolutely eligible uh, for public service loan forgiveness.
someone asked if I made previous payments under a standard plan with the upcoming changes, will I get credit for the past payments? Yes, you will. This is uh, some of the, the great news again about some of these lasting improvements to the program. You will be able to get credit for payments made under any type of repayment plan. All right. So again, I, I highly encourage anyone uh, who thinks that they might be eligible for public service loan forgiveness. Uh, if you have not yet submitted uh, a PSLF form, uh, it is in your best interest to do so as soon as possible uh, for any current or previous employment you might have had. And just to clarify, for public service loan forgiveness, you can be enrolled in any type of income-driven repayment plan. Okay, so that includes repay, pay, IBR, ICR, and even this new revised repay. Now, when it comes to uh, this process, I, I just saw a question. Someone asked, does Savvy have people who can help me walk through all the forms and process for PSLF? It's very overwhelming. Uh, and this goes out to Mitzi and, and anyone else. Uh, you're, you're not alone and that's exactly what we are here to do. Uh, so at this point, I'm gonna keep moving forward and I wanna sort of transition into exactly uh, how Savvy can assist all of you uh, through what I know is going to be a confusing, overwhelming period and make sure that you're not only uh, prepared for repayment, but maximizing and optimizing your situation, really minimizing that monthly payment to maximize potential forgiveness. So again, through Savvy, we're going to ask you some basic questions, all right? And we are able to show you a personalized repayment and forgiveness plan. We continue to monitor for new programs and policy changes. And just like we're doing now, we will update you uh, as things unfold and in real time. Uh, we also offer you the ability to offload that administrative burden, the paperwork, et cetera, uh, onto us. We take that on for you. Uh, and we basically can uh, sort of take on the enrollment uh, certification whole thing uh, for you uh, around repayment and forgiveness, uh, whether that be public service loan forgiveness, teacher loan forgiveness, or even just enrolling in an income-driven repayment plan. You are able to do all of that through your Savvy account and with the support of the Savvy team. And last but not least, and I know that many of you have benefited from this already, uh, you're able to receive personalized support from our student loan experts, many of which are actually on this call today uh, and are diligently answering as many of your questions as possible. Uh, this is exactly why we're here. Uh, I know so many of you find it stressful uh, to uh, interact and deal with your servicer, uh, have been given misinformation, have been led astray, uh, and so we're here to change that. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through a few screens to show you what you would need to do right now, or at least make sure that you are set up for success and how you can utilize Savvy to your benefit. First and foremost, when you log back into your Savvy account, the first thing you're going to see is your Savvy dashboard. All right, so this is gonna sort of be like mission control for everything Savvy. It's where you're gonna be able to do a lot of different things. First and foremost, it's where you can invite your friends and family to also benefit from Savvy. We are all about sharing the information uh, and making sure that we're not only helping ourselves with our student debt, but helping our communities, uh, our family members, our loved ones, our colleagues uh, tackle their student debt as well. I always say, if you have student debt, you either know some, someone with student debt or are related to someone with student debt. Uh, so you can uh, invite any friends or family to take advantage of Savvy right from your Savvy account. From your dashboard, you can also select your Savvy plan. So this is basically where you can decide how you want to utilize Savvy. You can always, all right, create your Savvy account and use Savvy for free under the DIY plan. All right, we're going to show you your best options, uh, and then we will give you instructions uh, and guidance on how to enroll if you should choose to handle the enrollment process, uh, whether it be for repayment or forgiveness on your own. Uh, or you can always opt to upgrade to our essential plan. Uh, and this is basically where we take on that administrative burden for you. Uh, and with the click of a button, we are able to whip up your repayment application, your public service loan forgiveness, employment certification forms, 
uh, regardless of how many you might require. All of that can be done with the click of a button through your Savvy account. Uh, and then we monitor uh, and track uh, those applications to ensure you cross the finish line. Can't tell you how many borrowers have submitted applications uh, and then months later found out they were rejected uh, and never end up following up or, or figuring out why uh, to no fault of their own. This program uh, is super complicated. Uh, and so never end up crossing the finish line. And that's exactly why we're here to prevent that from happening. Uh, and then we also offer uh, a pro option. This is sort of our highest level of con concierge service where from your savvy account, you can directly schedule a phone call uh, with one of our student loan experts uh, and get right on the phone to discuss your situation. Uh, so there are sort of three different options in which you can utilize savvy uh, and it is totally up to you. But the process basically goes like this. You know, we're gonna ask you some basic questions around your family size, your income, and your employment. All of this is to help us identify the optimal repayment and forgiveness plan for you. And again, I just wanna emphasize for those that are uh, interested in pursuing public service loan forgiveness, this employment section is crucial. I highly encourage you to add not only your current employment, but any previous employment you might have had. Savvy has a database of all of the public service loan forgiveness as well as teacher loan forgiveness eligible employers in the country. So when you start typing in your employer name, it should pop up from that drop down menu. You're able to select it and we'll ask you further clarifying questions to determine your eligibility. Again, by adding that full employment history, that's going to give us a better idea of exactly what kind of forgiveness you are eligible for and how close you are to achieving it. The last step, uh, and one of the most important, especially considering so many borrowers have had their servicers changed within the last three years, is syncing your student loan account. Uh, we provide a loan sync through a technology called Plaid, the best in class syncing technology. If you have a Venmo account, you've used Plaid before. Uh, it's used across most financial technology applications these days. It allows you to select your servicer. So let's say Navient in this case, enter in your Navient username and password credentials, and it's going to sync over a read-only snapshot of that student loan data. So it's not giving us access or anything like that, but just a snapshot of the data points we need to refine that estimate. Things like your principal balance, your disbursement date, your loan type, et cetera. All of this factors into your eligibility for these programs. And once you've done that, you reach the plan options page. This is basically where we show you your eligibility around repayment and forgiveness. Now, keep in mind, this new type of income-driven repayment plan uh, has not been implemented yet. So it is not going to show uh, your options under that plan just yet. As soon as the Department of Education officially implements the program, that will be live within your Savvy account. We'll notify you and you'll be able to come back and check your options under that new plan as well as enroll. All right, but it's going to show you what your monthly payment could look like, what that total payment over time would be, how long exactly until you'd receive forgiveness down to the year and the month, and how much in total forgiveness you'd be eligible to receive. You might be eligible for a couple of different repayment options and we'll show you all of those. You can expand below for more details. We're gonna show you all the information that you need to make the best and informed decision. And it's at that point where the next step is going to be submitting applications, whether it be for an income-driven repayment plan or public service loan forgiveness. And again, you can decide to either do that on your own through our DIY, uh, or you can uh, opt to have Savvy take on that burden for you uh, and upgrade to our essential plan uh, where we will be able to take that process on uh, and make sure that you actually cross the finish line. Uh, so this is just an example of what that essential plan looks like. Uh, on the left-hand side here, you can see with just a click of a button, start ECF, that stands for Employment Certification Form, you as a borrower can basically initiate as many employment certification forms, let's say for public service loan forgiveness as you need. They will go uh, right to your employer for you. You don't need to print anything out and bring paper into your HR. We handle that whole process for you on the back end. We send it off to your employer, uh, whether it's current or previous, uh, collect their signature, uh, make sure there's no human error, everything is accurate, 
and submit it to Mohila on your behalf via digital fax. Uh, and from there, we then track and monitor that application to ensure Mohila is reviewing it in a timely and accurate manner. You're getting the credits that you deserve and you should, uh, and you are on your way to forgiveness. On the right-hand side is just an example of how we pre-fill and digitize the income-driven repayment plan application. Again, with the click of a button, you're able to essentially submit uh, and enroll in this program through your Savvy account as well. And then this is just a closer look at the application monitoring uh, as part of that essential plan. You know, one of the, the most frustrating things I find as a borrower, and I, I know, uh, I, you know, I hear a lot from borrowers I work with, is the lack of transparency that they have into what's going on with their servicer. They'll submit an application and it will be months of radio silence, uh, or they will finally hear back and it's rejected and the letter telling them why is uh, not English. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's not able uh, to be understood uh, by anyone. Uh, and so this is exactly where we cut through that and provide a level of transparency for borrowers that they've never had before. So on the left-hand side here, you can see someone who is tracking three different public service loan forgiveness uh, applications, as well as their income-driven repayment application. And zoomed in here on the right is a look uh, at how we actually monitor those applications uh, and what that tracking looks like. A borrower can see exactly where they are in the process, what we might still need from them, uh, what the next steps are, the expected wait times, et cetera. All of that is laid out. Uh, so there's full transparency between you, the borrower, us here at Savvy, and we are able to effectively mediate uh, between you and your servicer and make sure uh, the best outcome is achieved. And last but not least, uh, our amazing customer support team, which I'm sure many of you uh, have experienced uh, in your uh, in your days as a savvy user thus far. Uh, you are able to consult our interactive help center at any point in time. We have articles on all of the items that we talked about here today. Uh, you are able to send a message to our support team uh, directly via, via your savvy account, or, and this is new, you're able to give us a call uh, weekdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and the number is right there on your screen, but I will make sure our team puts that in the chat. Uh, and you're able to give our team uh, a call uh, and get your questions answered. So we wanna make sure we are as accessible as possible to anyone that needs our help. All right, so to wrap things up and just reiterate uh, sort of some next steps here. First and foremost, we wanna just make sure everyone has access to their savvy account. I know it's been a while since many of us have thought about our student loans. So making sure you're able to log in You've updated your information and synced your uh, most recent servicer with your Savvy account uh, is very, very important. That way we can monitor the status uh, of your student loans and make sure to alert you uh, if we see any changes on your student loan account, all right? Uh, and then if you choose to, you're gonna wanna upgrade to Essential uh, for our assistance in completing those applications. Otherwise, uh, you can remain on DIY uh, and we'll make sure to uh, provide you with those instructions and guidance along the way. As always, we will be hosting educational webinars and workshops uh, on any breaking uh, program and policy updates going forward. All right, so I know, you know, a couple of things we talked about here today. We are awaiting the SCOTUS or Supreme Court decision on President Biden's student debt relief plan. That could come as early as tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Again, we will notify you of any of these updates. We're also awaiting uh, the official release and implementation of the new income-driven repayment plan. Again, you are not able to enroll in that program yet, uh, but as soon as it becomes available, uh, we will notify all savvy users uh, and assist you with enrolling uh, in that plan. And in the meantime, uh, if you wanna talk or chat or figure out what's going on with your situation, uh, you can send us a message from your Savvy account or give us a call at 833-382-3175, weekdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern. 